To draw the resonance structures of ozone, O3, you need a Lewis structure that's valid in the first place. We have three of these oxygens. Each oxygen is in group 16, so brings six valence electrons with it. I'm going to draw my three O's in a line. Now, the structure of ozone has the three O's not in a line, but they're not in a ring. We've proven that, and I realize that you can draw a Lewis structure that has them in a ring, but that's simply not how ozone is. You can look it up. We need 18 electrons throughout this whole thing. Now, the way that I draw multi-atom Lewis structures is to give myself single bonds between the atoms that I know are bonded. That's two, four, electrons accounted for. And remember, I need six for each of the oxygens, 18 total. Now, I fill the octets on the outer atoms. Remember, nonmetals need eight electrons in the outer shell to be stable. I had two, four electrons written, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Now the octets on the outer atoms are full. I dump all of the rest onto the center atom. That was 16 electrons. I need 18, so that's two extra electrons here. This is not the complete Lewis structure because this oxygen only has two, four, six electrons around it. The fact that there are Lewis structures here come from the fact that this oxygen needs two more electrons to be stable. But does it get those two electrons from the oxygen on the left or the oxygen on the right? The answer is it's complicated. And in terms of Lewis structures, you have to draw it in both ways. And each of those ways is a resonance structure. So suppose these two electrons moved in to become a double bond. That would give you an oxygen with a double bond to the next oxygen, which is single bonded to the next. These lone pairs were untouched. Four of these lone pairs were untouched. And that lone pair still belongs to the center oxygen. Now, each of these oxygens has a full octet. And so this is a valid Lewis structure for ozone. But what if two electrons came in from the right instead? you'd have that oxygen double bonded to the oxygen to the left, and then that single bonded to the next one. It is those six lone pairs that are untouched. These two are left alone, and these four were left alone as well. Now, we have two equally valid Lewis structures here. The way that these contribute to make the actual structure of ozone is that the actual structure is about halfway in between these two. To show the resonance, we give ourselves a double-ended arrow. And some teachers will have you draw a resonance hybrid in which this bond is drawn halfway between one, sorry, that's two and one, and then the other bond is drawn halfway between one and two. Those are both basically one and a half bonds. The resonance hybrid here could be drawn with one and a half bonds to each of the oxygens on either side. And then it also gets complicated with the number of oxygens you draw on each of these here. Um, I guess I just draw four on each because each of these bonds can kind of imply that there's extra oxygens floating around. And if this was a full double, that'd have to be here. And if that was a full double, it'd have to be there. These are your two resonance structures. And if you look at the bond length of ozone, you'll find that the length is somewhere in between a single and double bond. I, would, I wouldn't venture to say that they're exactly one and a half bonds, but they're somewhere in between single and double the Lewis structures showing them as discrete singles and doubles are resonance structures, and the actual structure is somewhere in between those two.
Congratulations, you did it. There's only two valid resonance structures here. Best of luck.